Okay, uh, welcome back to part two of the uh, law of signs and uh, including the ambiguous case. And so we're going to pick off where we pick up where we left off, which is talking about the um, the three different scenarios that can occur with the ambiguous case of the law of signs. So we dealt with the first one, uh, which is when uh, we solve and the uh, angle that we get is undefined. Uh, the second one is when the angle produces a value of 90. Uh, in that case, we know there's one triangle, undefined is no triangles, and now we just need to deal with the uh, scenario where um, we can actually end up with two triangles uh, given the uh, with the given information. And so what we're going to look at in this particular instance is uh, we've got uh, a given angle of 30 degrees. In this particular case, uh, the length of the side opposite the 30 degree angle uh, is going to be 8, so side EF will be given as 8 uh, and side DE is 13 and so I'll remind you once more since we have SSA uh, since the angle given is uh, um, uh, an acute angle in this case 30 degrees uh, and since the side opposite the uh, uh, given angle is smaller than the other side we have uh, the three requirements for the ambiguous uh, law of signs my setup is going to be exactly the same as it was before and so I'm going to be saying uh, sine of 30 degrees uh, over uh, this time 8 uh, is equal to uh, sine of angle F, which is an unknown angle, uh, divided by uh, 13. Uh, and so you'll see the setup is exactly the same as before, just with the different side length. So we had a side length of 5, then a side length of 6.5, and now a side length of 8. And so... Uh, angle F is going to equal uh, sine to the minus 1 uh, inverse sine of 13 sine 30 degrees divided by 8 and uh, now we'll go ahead and do that calculation so once again uh, I'm gonna go up highlight this portion of the calculation hit enter it pastes it down for me uh, and then I can just move in and change the denominator to 8 and this time it produces an answer for us of 54 uh, and we'll work to two decimal places 54.34 54.34 degrees and what you need to recognize in this particular case is that if you look and hopefully uh, the the diagram will show you that if this side is 13 and this side is 8 and this angle is 30 we can calculate that the measure of angle F is going to be 54.34 degrees. And so this angle here is going to be 54.34. But what you should also hopefully be able to see from the diagram is that this side could also have been pivoted inside. And so if you look at this arc here, if you imagine this being part of a circle, of course it could continue all the way around, that the, the, the triangle, uh, the given information in the triangle is exactly the same. This is 30, this is 13, and this is 8. But there is the possibility that we join F uh, at a different place. Since the length of DF is not given, it's not fixed, we can play around with its length. And so in a situation where we have SSA, the angle is acute, and the side opposite is smaller than the other side, but big enough to create a, 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 a triangle, we have to consider the possibility that there are two different triangles that are possible. And those two different triangles that are possible are, and so we've got the two F's over here, this F and this F over here, and really what we should have is, this is going to be, let's say, F1, because it's the first possibility, and this is going to be F2, because the position of F has got two distinct possibilities. And so on the one hand, we have this triangle over here, triangle DEF1, uh, and this triangle has got angles 30, 54.34, and then whatever that is, we could calculate that pretty easily. Uh, but then we have a second possibility where angle F2 over here, if we use the other position, we create a different triangle. And now the question is, how big would this angle over here be, angle FT, uh, sorry, F2? And what you should hopefully notice is, in this particular case, since this is the same length, X and X, it pivots in here, 
this would be equal to this, which would make this an isosceles triangle, which means this angle of 54, 54.34 would also be here, 54.34. And if you wanted to calculate the uh, uh, other possible angle measure for F, this one is 50, uh, uh, F1 is 54.34. The other possibility would be the linear pair of angle F1. And so the other possibility is that we've got angle F2, and its measure is going to be 180 minus 54.34 degrees. Uh, and you can see that's noted over here. They are going to be supplements of each other. And so what is that going to give us? 125 point, uh, try not to mess this up, 66 six correct to two decimal places. So hopefully that's correct. Um, uh, and hopefully what you can see from this explanation is under, under the three requirements, uh, if we have these three requirements, then there are three distinct possibilities. How will you know which one it is? You set it up normally using the law of sines. If your angle produces uh, an undefined answer, you have no triangle. If it produces a 90 degree angle, you have one triangle. And if it produces any other measure, we have got two triangles. Uh, we know the angle in one of them. To find the other angle, we realize that they are supplements of each other or a linear pair uh, in this particular case as well. Okay, and so that's the ambiguous case of the law of sines. Now the next two examples are going to show us pretty much how to apply it. And so there's going to be two types of questions. The first type of question will say, how many triangles are possible? And so these are effectively law of sines questions um, that we're going to set up. And then depending on what we get for the measure of the angle, we should be able to answer that. And then we're going to get uh, a, a regular question asking us to find missing angles in this particular case. And then we've got to watch out. This is the one that's a little bit trickier. We've got to watch out to see if the um, requirements of the ambiguous case of the law of sine are in place, then there may be more than one uh, correct answer to the missing angles. Okay, so let's go ahead and set each of these up. Okay, um, and I will just draw one quick sketch over here. We've got angle A, side A, and so if we draw our triangle, uh, and again, uh, we've got angle A over here, so this is 35 degrees, we've got side A is 10, and we've got side B, and so if I put B over here, side B is going to be 8. And so hopefully what you can see uh, 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 straight away is that the answer to this particular question uh, is going to be uh, one triangle, and you can know that for sure because even though the angle is acute, even though we have been given SSA, the side opposite the given angle is larger than the other side. And so ambiguity is not possible in this case. And the correct answer is going to be one triangle. Okay, in the next example, we've got uh, measure of angle A is 45, A is 5, B is 10. And so we'll draw a quick sketch for that one. If I have angle A over here, and that's 45 degrees, if I have got the length of side A is 5, if I've got angle B over here and side B is 10, we do fulfill the requirements. So we have got an acute angle, we've got SSA, and the uh, smaller side uh, is opposite the given angle. We do have the possibility of ambiguity. So now what we're going to do is a, a law of sines calculation. And so we will say uh, sine 45 degrees over uh, 5 is going to equal sine of angle B, and that's going to be over 10. I'm going to rearrange angle B is going to be equal to sine to the minus 1 of 10 sine 45 over 5. And now we're looking to see what kind of an answer we get in order to be able to say how many triangles. Okay, so... Uh, we are looking for sine to the minus 1 of uh, 10 sine 45, and that is divided by 5. In this particular case, we get an answer of undefined, 
And so that answer of undefined allows us to come back to the question and say, since the angle is undefined, we have got zero triangles possible in this particular case. Okay, um, there is a way that you could have uh, realized that a little bit quicker, but we won't get into that right now. Um, the third example over here, uh, same kind of setup, so let's draw ourselves a triangle quickly to see if there's the possibility of the ambiguous case. So we have angle A at 38 degrees, we've got side A as 12, we've got side B as 18, and so we're going to go ahead and do the exact uh, same setup, and this side, uh, this time determine what uh, the measure of the angle is, and then we'll be able to conclude uh, how many triangles we have. Okay, and so uh, sine of 38 degrees over 12 is going to equal sine of angle B over 18. Uh, angle B will be sine to the minus 1 of 18 sine 38 over 12. And now we're going to see what we get. So once again, sine to the minus 1. Uh, 18 sine 38 divided by 12 and this time it produces an answer of 67.44 it's not 90 degrees a triangle is possible and therefore in fact two triangles are going to be possible okay and so let's move on to the last example what I want you to do in this particular case is to sketch it set it up and see if you can get the correct answer. So pause the video and then come back and have a look at the solution to see if you have uh, understood uh, the ambiguous case of the law of signs. All right, welcome back. So hopefully what you did was uh, you set it up as follows. Sine of 22 over 10 is equal to sine of angle B over 15. Uh, you'll notice I wrote a quick note up here. We do have SSA, two uh, given sides and a non-included angle. The angle is acute and the side opposite the angle is smaller than the other given side, and so we do have the possibility of ambiguity. We come over here, we do our calculation for angle B, and since it yields an answer which uh, is not undefined and is not 90, we do have ambiguity, and so you'll notice I've labeled this as angle B1, 34.19 degrees. The other option is the supplement, 145.81, and so we do have the possibility that this side pivots here or that we pivot the side inside to a different angle B. Hopefully what you realize at this point is that we must now find angle C, but there are going to be two possibilities for angle C. There's going to be angle C in the uh, uh, larger of the triangles, and then there's going to be the alternate angle C, and so I'll label those as C1 and C2 as well. Angle C1 is going to be 180 minus 22 minus 34.19 and uh, we'll work that out in a moment angle uh, C2 is going to be uh, 180 minus 22 minus angle B2 which is 145.81 and so let's do those quickly we've got uh, 180 minus 22 uh, minus 34.19 is going to be our first answer. The second one, 180 minus 22 minus 145.81. And so our two versions of angle C are going to be 123.81 and 12.19. Uh, so let me make a note of those, 123.81. And the other one, I think, was 12.19.